Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to our next session of Science in the Quran. Today I wanted to take a specific example of a verse that really can only be understood in the light of modern science. And I think it's one of those quote unquote miracle verses that really would prove the authenticity of the Quran. But regardless of that, this course is more about our appreciation of verses in the Quran as believers enhanced by scientific knowledge. So we have already talked about some general ideas, the purpose of the course. We took a philosophical example about the laws of nature, and now I'd like to look at a specific example. So let us just look at the verse without any further hints or explanations. And the verse that I am interested in is this verse here from Surah Al-An'am. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فمن يرد الله أن يهديه يشرح صدره للإسلام ومن يرد أن يضله يجعل صدره ضيقا حرجا كأنما يصعد في السماء كذلك يجعل الله الرجس على الذين لا يؤمنون So let's look at the translation And whomsoever God wills to guide his bosom or his chest he opens wide with willingness toward self-surrender. And whomever he wills to let go astray, his bosom or his chest he causes to be tight and constricted as if he were climbing onto the skies. It is thus that God inflicts horror upon those who will not believe. So here we have a very interesting analogy that the Quran gives. And the part I'm interested in is that whoever God wills to let go astray, his chest or his bosom, he causes to be tight and constricted as if he were climbing into the skies. Now let's think together, as an Arabian nomad of the 7th century, how could I understand this? If you ascend into the skies, why would your chest feel tight and constricted? As a 20th or 21st century uh, human, you probably have some ideas. You know that climbing very high up causes some loss of air pressure and oxygen. That's why mountain climbers get short of breath. But the 7th century Arab would not really have known this, and I'll, I'll give you a couple of reasons why. First of all, the highest point in Saudi Arabia Jabal Sauda is only about 10,000 feet high. It's near the border with Yemen, and that's not really at all high enough to cause significant physiological effects. The kind of effects that the Quran is describing can really only be understood in light of the very modern concept of air pressure. Once again, think about being a 7th century nomad or even think about 500 years later, or nearly a thousand years later, nobody had any idea that air has weight. In fact, there's a very significant air pressure right around you as you sit in your room listening to this. Air exerts about 14.7 pounds of force per square inch on your skin. We, of course, don't feel that because that's what we have gotten used to. That's the baseline. But this concept of atmospheric pressure was really only discovered in the, seventh, in the 17th century. And it was a very startling fact. Evangelista Torricelli was one of the first to discover atmospheric pressure and helped in inventing the barometer to measure pressure and to prove that air has weight. And he said, we live submerged at the bottom of an ocean of the element air. Now, what does this concept of air pressure have to do with what we're talking about? Well, once we understand that air has weight, we then can begin to understand 
what happens as we go up into the sky. And as you see here, as we go up into the sky, higher and higher, air gets thinner and thinner. It means that the air pressure becomes less and less. So let's say I have something filled with air like a hot air balloon. As it goes up into the sky, because it was filled with air at atmospheric pressure, then it climbs up the air pressure around it is less, so the balloon expands. The air pressure gets even less as it goes higher and higher, and the balloon might even pop. And that, of course, is why when you fly on an airplane, the cabin has to be pressurized, because we could not survive the lack of air pressure uh, at the heights that modern jetliners fly. Now let's look at a couple of graphs, just to kind of bring it home. By the way, air pressure is measured either in terms of atmospheres, where at sea level, at zero altitude, you are at one atmosphere air pressure, by definition. Or it's also measured in terms of tor, that is the unit honoring Evangelista Torricelli, uh, who again was one of the early discoverers of air pressure. So let's look at what happens as our altitude increases as we climb up into the sky. Air pressure falls, 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 and as we get about 15 kilometers high, it falls quite dramatically. Right about here would be the height of Mount Everest. Here's a depiction with sort of opposite axes. Here is pressure, again in Tor, and here is altitude. And I'm sorry, actually, the pressure here is in millibars, not in tor. But in any case, if we take a look at pressure at zero altitude, this would be atmospheric pressure. And as we begin to climb up, pressure falls, falls, falls. So at Mount Everest, our pressure is about 400 millibars at the top of Mount Everest. And as we climb further up, Look at how the air pressure approaches zero. Climbs very, this curve climbs very steeply, a very sharp drop in air pressure with high altitude. Now let's try to understand physiologically what this would do. To help us do that, I'd like you to watch this demonstration of a weather balloon climbing high into the atmosphere. So as the air pressure gets less, you're going to notice the balloon expands bigger and bigger and bigger until it finally will pop from the lack of air pressure surrounding it. Okay, and so the balloon exploded because of the extremely low air pressure. Now let's return to our verse. And let's look at the segment of the verse that we said we were interested in. And whomever he, God, wills to let go astray, his bosom or his chest he causes to be tight and constricted as if he were climbing onto the skies. Now we can understand something of what this verse means. Because the air in your lungs is just like the air in that weather balloon. If you were to rapidly climb into the sky, your lungs would begin to expand just like the weather balloon because of decreased air pressure but your lungs are housed in your rib cage, And so the lungs, as they expand, would press very hard against the rib cage, And you would be feeling that your chest is very tight because there is now no room for these big expanded lungs. And they're also pressing down on the diaphragm that needs to move up and down for you to take a breath. This situation is more complicated by the fact that as the air pressure drops, so does the oxygen tension. So, not only is the air pressure very low, but the amount of oxygen is very low. So on top of your lungs feeling very expanded and pressing against your chest, 
you are also suffering severe oxygen deprivation and you are very short of breath and trying very hard to gasp for air with these very expanded lungs that can't expand any further to take a breath. And so your chest would feel incredibly tight and constricted, just as the Quran describes. Now, I posit to you that there is no way that somebody in the Arabian desert in the 7th century would have been able to understand or appreciate this. In fact, one might even think that as you go up into the sky, you're getting close to the glory of God, your, your chest would open up and, and feel light and bright. But the Quran says something quite opposite of that. And now we can understand where this chest tightness would come from. And now, just to sort of further emphasize the miraculous nature of the verse, I would like to call your attention to this word right here. It says that his chest would be tight and constricted. This is an intensive form of the verb that in the infinitive or in the present tense would be yasadu, to climb up. Yasadu means to climb rapidly up in an intensive way. We actually dealt with this sort of thing with Surah Al-Imran with the verb yatafakkarun, if you remember. And look at how this verb is used elsewhere in the Quran. So for example, in Surah Fatir, مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْعِزَّةَ فَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ جَمِيعًا إِلَيْهِ يَصَعَدُ الْكَلِمُ الطَّيِّبُ وَالْعَمَرُ الصَّالِحُ يَرْفَعُهُ So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He who desires might and glory ought to know that all might and glory belong to God alone. Unto him ascend all good words and the righteous deed he does exalt. So here in this verse, the Quran uses the verb يَصَعَدُ to climb up. يَصَعَدُ الْكَلِمُ الطَّيِّبُ That the good word ascends up to God. It is not the infinitive form, yasadu. But when it comes to this effect of chest tightness, the Quran uses the verb form, yasadu, fissama, that he climbs rapidly into the heavens. And for this effect to be felt, that is exactly what is needed. As you know, people do climb Mount Everest. Of course, as you saw on the graphs, with Mount Everest, there's only a modest, modest drop in air pressure, but they do that gradually. In fact, they take days in the various base camps to acclimate, right? And so they exchange out the air in their lungs and get used to the lower and lower pressure and oxygen tension as they go up. That would be the case of somebody yasadu into the heavens. You could potentially acclimate because of the gradual climb. But yasadu means you would rapidly shoot up into the sky. And in that case, there would be no escape from the feeling of the chest constriction that was strong enough to pop a very thick acrylic or leather weather balloon. And so here we have an example of a verse that perhaps we read and just brushed by. But when we look at just a little bit of the science behind it, we realize that there is no way that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, could have authored such a verse and picked the intensive form of the verb to use. This really points in my mind to a divine origin of the Quran. But again, I don't want to argue that point. The, the purpose is that I now hope that next time you read this verse, inshallah, you will have a much deeper appreciation for the finesse and the preciseness and the knowledge that lies behind it, that alhamdulillah, we now live in an age that we can glimpse a portion of its glory. So inshallah, we will see you next time. And salamu alaykum.